Peter, can you tell us a little bit about what Bioventix does and the business model? Bioventix is uh, an antibody technology company in Farnham in Surrey and there are 13 of us in a lab in Farnham and we make antibodies for use on blood testing machines. So we create and manufacture antibodies to different human hormones and human disease analyse and then try and sell those to the big blood testing companies that operate around the world such as Roche and Siemens and Abbott um, and that, that's the core of our business. Can you tell me a little bit about your antibodies and why they're different from your competitors? Antibodies are part of the natural immune system of all animals and um, antibodies are made when uh, an individual or any animal is exposed to something that is foreign. And so the way we go about making antibodies, as many other people do in the world, is to immunise an animal with something to which to, to them is foreign. And the animal will then make antibodies to that foreign entity. Specifically, the cells within the immune system of the animal which are responsible for that response are the white blood cells or the B lymphocytes. And antibody technology revolves around isolating those specific lymphocytes and through a means of biotechnological process, culturing those antibodies and mass producing antibodies of a single specificity. And that is what a monoclonal antibody is. And we specialize in the creation and manufacturing of sheep monoclonal antibodies. So our antibodies are derived from sheep, but made in culture, mass produced for use on hospital blood testing machines. And what's the advantage of sheep as against anything else? We thought for a number of years, bordering on decades, that um, because um, sheep make better antibodies than mice do, uh, perhaps because they're bigger and live longer, but better antibodies with an increased sensitivity or affinity or specificity in what they bind to can result in better blood testing machines on the platforms used by our customers. And they do. There are many cases where we've made antibodies to uh, entities which have transformed blood testing. For example, in the case of testosterone, where it became clear uh, around about 2003 that many of the blood testing machines that were used for testing for testosterone uh, worked fine with male samples, but samples from women and children were not being tested uh, correctly. Uh, and that was down to the um, poor affinity and specificity of the antibodies being used on those machines. Subsequently, we made an antibody to testosterone, which when used on exactly the same machines, does facilitate accurate tests in women and children. And that has clearly helped the doctors and the patients in the fertility clinics where those tests are being operated. And the antibodies that you major on? Well, we've made antibodies to a variety of things that are in routine use on hospital blood testing machines around the world. Uh, there's a thyroid hormone called T3, there's a testosterone antibody that we've mentioned, uh, but in addition, in addition to that, there's antibodies to estrogens and vitamin D, which is now our biggest selling product for vitamin D deficiency testing, but also antibodies for um, cardiac disorders, so heart diseases such as heart failure and heart attack. You sell antibodies, but you also sell the royalty for each test? Yes, and a very important part of our business is the way in which we price and charge for our antibodies. We sell antibodies on a pounds or dollars or euros per milligram basis, um, but in the 21st century, a simple sales model such as that renders one's position very vulnerable to miniaturization, such that as blood testing machines get smaller and the technology used in them gets smaller and consume lower and lower quantities of reagents and blood, the revenue which would be derived from providing reagents to do a million blood tests would be, would be diminished by the reduced consumption of antibody products in the reagent. So one would be very vulnerable to one's revenue by dropping by a factor of 10 or 100, but still facilitate the same number of tests, thereby losing out one's value um, or a reasonable share of one's value in the final product. Consequently, uh, the charging mechanisms that feature on all of our um, contracts and arrangements with our customers is a share in the final product that our antibody contributes towards. 
Um, so we have a small royalty on this downstream use of our antibodies in the blood testing uh, machines and reagent packs around the world. And have you financed the research for the antibodies? Is it your intellectual property or is that paid for by your partners? We have two sides to our business, Hans. We have a, um, an own risk and non-exclusive portfolio of antibodies where the reagents and the resource to create and manufacture those antibodies is from Bioventix. And so we can sell those products non-exclusively to whoever might be interested around the world. We also have another arm of our business where the research and, um, is sponsored by one of our customers and the reagents and know-how may additionally be provided by that customer. And in exchange for the funding and the know-how, the customer derives exclusive access to the antibodies that are created. Both models are important um, aspects of our business. We, we work non-exclusively on things like vitamin D, where we can do the work on our own, and we see there being a demand from a variety of customers around the world. But we have other projects, such as troponin, where in order to achieve what we have done with Siemens, it requires a combination of our antibody technology and the immense know-how about troponin and heart disease that exists at Siemens Healthcare.